Using the cutout method can give you some very interesting designs, just like the ones that you can see on screen right now. And today, I'm going to show you how to create one. Hello there my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another video and today I'm going to be showing you how to create the cutout designs like you can see on screen right now. So without further ado, let's get started. Now to begin with, you are going to need to import the picture that you want to use. As you can see on screen, I have got this simple flower design here. And I'm going to be using that in order to create the design for today's video. If you're wondering where I got this design from, you can find it on Pexels.com. This is a library of videos and pictures that are all free to use. It's one of my favorite sites and I strongly suggest going and having a look for yourself. I will leave a link to the site in the description. Once you have the picture you want and you have downloaded it from Pexels, it is simply a case of opening up your file explorer and then clicking and dragging over Inkscape to import it into your document. Once you have, you need to fit it to your canvas. And that brings me to the next step, setting up your canvas. Now, as usual, you can go to File, scroll down to document properties and open up the document properties that way or you can simply come up to this little icon right here and click that to open up your document properties i have just got an a4 sized canvas with pixels selected because i prefer to work in pixels and when it comes to the scale it is set as one once you have the settings set as you would like them you can close out of it now when it comes to the actual design we're going to need to resize this picture so it matches the canvas so i'm going to hold ctrl and shift and scale that down until it is around the same size as the canvas now when i think of a flower i think of my young daughter sarah so in that vein i'm going to use the letter s for this design in order to do this, we are going to come over to our text editor tool. We're going to select it. And then I am going to click anywhere on the canvas just to get the cursor flashing up. I'm going to type the letter S. Now, in order to get the text editor window open, you can come up to the top toolbar and we can select this letter T, which says open text. With that open, you will get a window that looks a little bit like this. Now, I have already been through all of my text, and the one that seems to work the best is Russo 1. So if I come up to this search bar and type Russo 1, I can then select the text, keep it as regular, and apply. Now I'm going to go to my Select tool, and I'm going to hold Control and Shift and resize this to get it more in line with the rest. And as you can see, the Russo 1 font has a very thick line and it is very sharp corners. That's exactly what I'm wanting for this design. Now I'm just going to change this to white so it's easier to see over the picture. And I'm going to drop the opacity down to 50%. Now you can do that through this opacity here at the bottom left corner or you can use the fill and stroke menu which can be found on the top toolbar right here once that's open you can then use the slider to select the opacity now i want it around 50 percent so i can see the flower underneath now what i'm looking for is to have the flower protruding through the letter I'm not going to be using anything that's underneath the letter, but I want to use these parts here that are bridging the gap between the bottom and the top here. I would also like a little bit of it to be poking out of the top of the letter. So I'm going to reduce the size of this 
just slightly and I'm going to reposition it until I am happy with how it looks. Around there looks perfect to me. Now for this method it's going to be a lot easier if you select over everything and then we right click and duplicate. With that done we can then slide this off to the side and we're not going to need that for this next step. With this one selected I am now going to put the opacity all the way back up. Now that we have the opacity turned up full if we was to select the S we need to turn this text object into a path. So we're going to go to path object to path. Now I'm going to hold shift and select the picture underneath. With them both selected I can right click scroll down to where it says set clip and we can set the clip. Now as you can see we only have the image in the S like so. Now we are going to come to the duplicate of what we made earlier. We are going to select the letter on its own and again because we duplicated this before we turned that object to a path we are going to need to come back up to path object to path and if it drops below then all you need to do is come up to this raise to top button right here on the top properties toolbar now i've turned the opacity back up on this one as well i am going to right click and duplicate so now we have something that looks a little bit like this the next step we are just going to create a shadow from this letter here so we're going to come up to filters scroll all the way down to shadows and glows and then select drop shadow when you do you will have this little window open up what you're wanting is the inner cutout selected from the drop down click the live preview and as you can see now it is looking like this now the settings that i have got seem to work for me but my suggestion is to play around with it as you can see this can cause a massive change in your overall design once you have got it set to however you would like but i only want a small highlight for the shadow so i'm going to leave it at around there now if you want to copy mine i have currently got the blur radius at 9.2 I've got the horizontal offset at 4.8 and I've got the vertical offset at 6.3. But I do suggest having a play around with it until you get the look that you want. Once you are happy, click apply and then you can close. Now for this, I am going to turn snapping on because it will help us. So I'm going to come up to the top right corner, select snapping. And then I'm going to click and drag this over to the original design. And as you can see, now it gives a really cool cutout effect. Like we are looking through a cutout on a page to a different picture. Next, we want this flower to be protruding out from everything else. So in order to do that, we are going to use the pen tool and we're going to go over this. Now what we are going to be selecting with the pen tool is going to be the parts that are protruding out and bridging the gap in between all the negative spaces of the S. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the pen tool and now I'm just going to go through all the objects that I need and draw around the outline for them. However, before I start, I just wanted to also mention that if you have still got snapping turned on from the last step, you will need to turn it off because it will get in the way. And there you go. There are all the shapes that I want to keep. Everything that is protruding away from the letter. 
Now a good rule of thumb, because we placed a shadow over the original letter, we need to make sure that we don't go along the line of the letter and we want it to protrude into the letter slightly so we can cover that shadow up. But now with all them shapes created, I can then highlight all of them by holding shift and selecting each individual one. And then we can come up to path union. And now they are all one shape. Now as for the letter S, we no longer need that in this section, so we're just going to click and drag that off the picture. And what you're left with will be something that looks a little bit like this. Please bear in mind that you do not have to use the same picture that I am using. You can pretty much use any picture that you would like. I often find that using animals or nature of some sort like flowers or trees will work really well as you can see in the picture on screen right now and you don't have to use one single letter if you have got a landscape picture and you want to use a word you can do exactly that and get some really good results so now the step that we want to take is we want to clip the picture again we can do this by selecting the shape we've just created, holding shift and selecting the picture behind it, and then right clicking, going down and set clip. And now we have something that looks a little bit like this. Once you have this, you can then turn snapping back on. And when we click and drag, we should be able to snap this exactly onto where we have just taken it from originally. Like so. Now, as you can see, the shadow is still showing through, but do not fret, but that is just because of the layer order. All you have to do with it still selected is just come up to the top toolbar and raise to top. And as you can see, we now have this design and as you can see it gives you a really cool design and it is as simple as that now it is possible to go one step further and make this look a little bit more dynamic if we select the shape that we have just created and then we right click and duplicate we move it across to the right and now we're going to release the clip. So right click, scroll down and release the clip because what we don't want is the picture. We just want this shape. So I'm going to select the canvas to deselect everything, select the picture, hit delete. And now with this, I'm going to bring this back and I'm going to put it in exactly the same place. Now, with that done, I'm going to come to the Fill and Stroke menu. I'm going to increase the blur. And then I'm going to use the arrow keys just to move it along. Like so. And with that done, I'm just trying to match where the shadow is coming from. So because the shadow is coming from the top and left side of the S, I'm going to bring this to the right and down so you have the same shadow orientation. Now with that done, I'm going to lower this selection one step. And as you can see, it has now shadowed over the top of the page as well. But this has also given these shadows here and that is not what we want but there is an easy way to get rid of them by using the eraser tool within the eraser tool which can be found right here you have the three different modes you have delete objects touched by the eraser you have cut out paths and shapes or you have the mode that we need, which is clipping from the object. Now, clipping from objects works in exactly the same way as setting a clip. 
it will only take what's there and it will clip out the rest so the best way of showing you this would be to actually give you a demonstration with the eraser tool we are going to simply do that now because we have this object selected and not any of the others if i was to go here it would do nothing to the other shadow and that is exactly what we want so i'm just going to come across and i'm just going to make sure that i take away all of these lines being careful not to go over the rest of this object so we don't want to go over this shadow here because that will get rid of the shadows that we want to keep but everything else i'm going to slowly come over and make sure we take away all the rest inside the letter now i'm just roughly going through this and being very very quick if you want to be more precise you can of course take your time and you can lower the width of the eraser right here within this box to give you more control And there you have it my friends that's how you can create a cutout from any picture and any shape that you want as i said earlier you can use full words if you'd like you can use numbers you can use any shape that you want you could even create it using a star instead of a letter or a number or anything like that in fact you can use any path that you want in order to create this effect so thank you so much for watching my friends if you are not a member and you would like to be a member of the channel then you can find all the information that you want in the description down below and i would really appreciate it because it would be helping me to put out new content and it would help me to create the content that you want if you have suggestions for what you would like me to cover in Inkscape, please let me know in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And until next week's video, I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell. Say thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.